Hi guys, I'm Takara. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, I know it's been a minute. Please don't kill me, but I've been super busy. I'm gonna try to do better going forward. Anyway, as you guys saw in the title, I am going to be sharing with you guys my top summer fragrances in this video. Just a quick disclaimer, I will not be including any fragrances that I included in last year's summer slash hot weather fragrances video just to eliminate redundancy. I will have those videos linked down in my description box if you guys wanna check those out. I do still have most of those fragrances and will still be wearing them this summer, but yeah, I have some new fragrances that I wanna share with you guys or fragrances that weren't in that lineup last year. So if you guys are interested in seeing my top summer picks for 2021, then just keep watching. So as usual, this will not be in any particular order. I'll just be grabbing the fragrances and telling you guys my thoughts on them. So I'm gonna start with this one here. And this is Dolce Garden by Dolce & Gabbana. And you guys have not ever heard me talk about this fragrance, I don't believe. Fun fact, I actually decluttered this one last year around this time. Um, and I just recently, maybe a couple months ago, picked it up again. As you can see, it's a bit over half full. So I've really been wearing this and I've been loving it recently. I don't know why I just kind of was craving it for some reason. I remembered why I didn't like it. And to be honest, it smells exactly the same way it did to me then, but what bothered me then isn't really bothering me anymore. I believe my fragrance tastes have changed. Actually, I'm pretty sure it has because a lot of my faves, I'm kind of like not loving as much here recently, which is unfortunate, but yeah, I love this fragrance. So to me, this is like a sweet tropical floral fragrance. I know a lot of people say they don't get the florals in this. I definitely do. The floral note that I get the most in this is that magnolia note and if you guys don't know, I'm from the Magnolia State. I'm from Mississippi. Um, so I'm very familiar with the scent of Magnolia flowers. They have like this lemony, waxy scent to them. It's a scent that's nice to sniff directly from the flower, but not necessarily a scent that I wanna smell like. But actually, I kinda enjoy the aspect of the fragrance now. That's why I decluttered it then. Um, it wasn't that I disliked the fragrance, it was just that that note kind of threw me off and I wasn't really a fan of it. But now I'm able to still really enjoy this fragrance even though that note is there. So like I said, that's the most prominent floral note in this fragrance to my nose. And it also has a, a coconut note and I believe an almond milk note. So together, it's kind of like, it kind of gives it like this creamy, milky coconut scent, but it's not super sweet. As it dries down, I noticed that it gets sweeter, but before the dry down, it's more, I'd say it's more floral. And then it also has yellow florals in it that adds to like the creaminess of the fragrance. It's really nice. If you are somebody who was like me and that magnolia note may throw you off or you would like to get more of that sweetness that's in the fragrance, I recommend layering this with Victoria's Secret Coconut Passion. It kind of just makes the fragrance more sweet right up front rather than having to wait to the dry down to get that sweetness. But I really enjoy this. I've recently not been loving like overly sweet scents. I still like sweet fragrances, but I like them to have something that kind of contrasts the sweetness. And I get that with the floral aspect of this fragrance. So again, that is Dolce Garden by Dolce & Gabbana. And that is the first fragrance that I am discussing today. So the next fragrance I have here is YSL Libre. And I know for most people, this may be considered more of a like fall or like cold weather fragrance. To me, because it has that cleanness to it, it smells fresh, but then it has a bit of like tart juiciness from that black currant note. But the orange blossom note is what I get most in this. And I told you guys previously, orange blossom tends to smell fresh to me. And it smells like that in this fragrance. And it has that lavender note as well that makes it a bit uh, aromatic as well. So because of that, I feel like it's a great like summer fragrance. But when I wear Libre, I don't typically wear it on its own. I really enjoy layering this with Champagne Toast by Bath & Body Works, the lotion and the mist. And that just amps up the juiciness of it. It makes it more, more fruity, more bright, more sparkling, and very much so summer appropriate because Champagne Toast, if you guys haven't smelled it, is like a, like I say, the champagne fragrance. 
it has a black currant note, I believe. So it's like this tart, juicy, um, sweet champagne fragrance. So with this, it kind of just, like I said, it brightens it up and makes it more sparkling and summer appropriate. So love that combination, great in the summertime. And I actually was inspired to try that combination from Belly Bond. I believe she mentioned it first on her Instagram or that's where I saw it first. And I believe she's talked about it in videos as well. But yeah, that combination is amazing. If you have that um, fragrance by Bath and Body Works and you have Libre, definitely try layering them. But yeah, again, that is Libre by YSL. So this next fragrance you guys have seen on my channel numerous times. And the fragrance I'm talking about is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one in tents, the one in the black bottle. Now this is another fragrance that most people probably would think would be more cold weather appropriate. You know, I found last year that I wasn't really a fan of it in the cold weather. I noticed when it was cold outside, it was more floral to my nose and that's not <laughs> um the aspect of it that i like the most i like the sweetness the most the sweetness from that uh the vanilla note and that coconut note in this fragrance i told you guys to me it kind of vibes with alien think like alien and dolce garden had a baby and that's another reason why i picked up dolce garden because i'm like if i love this fragrance then why do i have an issue with dolce garden and they kind of they vibe but yeah anyway the jasmine note in this kind of smells like that alien jasmine and I'd say that's probably the most prominent floral note in this fragrance, at least to my nose. Um, it has a freshness from that orange blossom note. I believe it has an orange blossom note, but it is some freshness to it as well. And then the sweet notes are the coconut and the um, vanilla. So I'd say this is a like floral gourmand fragrance, same with Dolce Garden. The coconut here smells kind of like a toasted coconut scent to my nose. It's not creamy, it's not like coconut water, it smells toasted. And I believe that's because of the dark vanilla note that's in this. But there is also a bit of creaminess to it as well that I believe comes from that vanilla note, not the coconut, because it literally smells like toasted coconut to my nose. But yeah, I prefer this in the summer because like I said, it's sweeter than for me. So to me, this is more of like your hot weather fragrance. But again, that is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one in scents. So next I have a fragrance that you guys haven't seen on my channel yet. Um, I picked this up not too long ago. I mean, I've been loving it ever since I picked it up. So the fragrance I'm talking about is Signorina Rebel by Salvatore Ferragamo. And I was actually interested in this fragrance because of Tara Michelle from Opinionated Scents here on YouTube. Her description of it was that it was just a really pretty, easy going fragrance, if I'm remembering correctly. She said it wasn't anything that was complex, but it's a really beautiful fragrance. I think that's what she said, if I'm remembering correctly, but even if she didn't, that's how I feel about this fragrance. So what intrigued me most about this fragrance is that it has an ice cream note. And the ice cream note in the fragrance is not something that you see really often, but I don't know, I was just, I was intrigued and I felt like I just wanted to smell it. Plus this is pretty inexpensive. I think I paid like $30 for this. It was a tester bottle and this is the 100 ml. So it was worth blind buying it and trying it to me. So I do get the ice cream note in this, but it doesn't smell juvenile. Not that that's a bad thing. You know, y'all know I don't, I don't discriminate. <laughs> if I like it, I like it. But it doesn't smell juvenile. It's kind of like a, a more like sophisticated grown up um, ice cream scent. The ice cream note kind of just makes it smell, it's like a sweet, creamy vanilla scent. Um, it has a bunch of other notes as well, but I mostly get the ice cream note and then the citrus note. I think it's an orange note if I'm not mistaken, but um, some people were saying it kind of smells like uh, gold sugar or like an orange creamsicle, which is what I've compared gold sugar to smell like. And I can see that it does kind of smell like an orange creamsicle because you know, the orange creamsicle has the orange flavoring on the outside and then um, vanilla ice cream on the inside. This one I say smells more quality than gold sugar does because I found the Neroli note in gold sugar to be a bit off-putting. <laughs> it smelled more like orange peel as opposed to like orange juice. And I'd say here, this smells like sweet, like freshly squeezed orange juice. But I'd say more of the vanilla ice cream scent than the like orange scent. 
Now, the reason why I say this is good for summertime, this is definitely gourmand, but I feel that it doesn't project a whole lot. I got to turn the air off. So it's one that I can smell while I'm wearing it, but it's not super strong. I feel like people would have to be in your space to smell it. So it's more of an intimate fragrance. And it's one that I definitely overspray because it's so soft and it never becomes overwhelming. So for that reason, I feel like it's perfect for the heat if you wanna wear a sweet fragrance in the heat because the, the heat kinda helps to amplify the fragrance and help it project a bit more. Longevity is decent, maybe about, I'd say six hours, but I love this fragrance. Like uh, Tara said, it's nothing super complex. This stays pretty linear for the most part. I'd say you get more of that orange in the beginning of the fragrance. And then after that, you get more of the like ice cream notes and like the orange still there lingering in the background. But yeah, um, if you're interested in it, I'd say give it a go if that sounds good to you. I think it's worth a try. Again, that is Signorina Rebel by Salvatore Ferragamo. So I'm gonna talk about this one next because it also has an ice cream note and that's why I picked it up too. So this is by Dolce & Gabbana and this is light blue, love is love. Now, I was interested in picking this one up because I heard Gabby talking about it recently. I don't, I can't remember what she said about it. I don't think she uh, thought it was anything that was amazing. But when she put the notes up on the screen, I saw the ice cream note and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she said that you don't really smell it in this fragrance, but I wanted to try it because I typically like the light blue fragrances and I figured you couldn't go wrong with it. So to me, this fragrance is probably most similar to light blue Italian zest because to me, the lemon note is the most prominent note in this fragrance. It does also have a, a raspberry note and I do kind of smell that, but it's not super noticeable to my nose. I say this to me smells more like a lemon sherbet with like a hint of raspberry. And the reason why I say sherbet instead of like sorbet or something like that, because I do get that, that sweet, like milky creaminess that would be associated with like some type of dairy product and sherbet has dairy, sorbet doesn't have dairy. Yeah, I, cause it is sweet, but it's not overly sweet. It's like a sweet, but still refreshing fragrance. It's relatively linear. Uh, people complain about the longevity. I don't really have a big issue with longevity. I found actually that it lasted really well on my skin. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why, but I got probably a good eight hours. Now I wasn't projecting that entire time. It did project well though. I did like, I would get whiffs occasionally even up to that eight hour mark. When I say eight hours, that means like after that I can't smell it on my skin anymore if I like snipped where I sprayed it. But projection wise, I'd say it's decent. I do overspray it. And it's another one of those fragrances kind of like with the Signorina that you can spray a lot of it on and it never becomes overwhelming. It's just a pretty inoffensive scent that I feel is great for the, the summertime. So yeah, um, when I got this one, I actually decluttered my Italian zest because this is what I wanted Italian zest to be. When y'all saw me talk about it, um, I've talked about it a few times, I think, but um, I said that one was more of like a lemon sorbet with like the lemon zest in the mix. But the more I wore it, the more I found that there's a greenness to that fragrance that I wasn't really a fan of. And it's probably from the, the lemon verbena note. It was like a green citrus scent that lingered around throughout the entirety of the fragrance that annoyed me. This doesn't have that greenness, so that's why I prefer this one. Just straight up lemon uh, sherbet, like I said, like a hint of raspberry, maybe like a raspberry drizzle or something on top. But yeah, again, that is light blue. Love is love and I love this fragrance for summer. <laughs> so next I have another fragrance you guys haven't heard me talk about and this is by YSL. This is Mon Perry Couture, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that is what it is though. You guys have never seen me talk about the original Mon Perry because I'm not the biggest fan of that fragrance. The patchouli note in that fragrance is too prominent to my nose. So it kind of annoys me when I wear it. So I never felt the need to pick that fragrance up. I actually tried this one at one of my friend's house. Oof, it's been a while at this point, probably like before COVID for sure. <laughs> 
Um, she had it in her bathroom. And I was like, never smelled that one. I sprayed it and I really liked it. And uh, not so long ago, YSL had an amazing deal on it on their site. And I was like, why not? Let me go for it. And I do really enjoy this fragrance. But I feel that if you like Versace Eros EDT, then you would probably enjoy this fragrance as well. But I mentioned that one in my spring video. Remember I told you guys that I felt like it might be a bit too sweet for me in the summertime. This one is like a less sweet take on that fragrance. It's still raspberry and lemon. It's still a bit sweet, but there's a freshness to it that kind of cuts that sweetness and makes it to where it's not overwhelming for me in the summer heat. Some really nice fragrance. That's mainly what I get, that raspberry and I think it's a lemon note but it's some type of citrus. That's the main thing I get from this fragrance. Let me see. And it's just so refreshing and juicy. It does still have the Montpourri DNA to my nose, but I'd say without the patchouli note, I think there is actually patchouli note still listed, but I don't smell it. Not really at all in this fragrance. So if you had the same issue with Montpourri as I did, I'd recommend checking this one out for sure. So again, that is Mon Perry Couture by YSL. So this next fragrance was actually sent to me by Twisted Lily, and they are a fragrance boutique that is located in Brooklyn. And they reached out to me and wanted to send me something. They told me to browse their site and send them like a list of fragrances that I'm interested in, and then they just picked one to send me. This one is actually the one that I was probably the least interested in and the most nervous about because on Fragrantica, it was voted to have a prominent patchouli note. I think that was like the second most prominent note that was voted on Fragrantica. And patchouli for me is, is hit or miss. I'm finding that I'm enjoying it more here recently, not at my taste are changing, <laughs> but it still can be hit or miss for me. And, in fragrances, especially like sweeter fragrances. But they were like, I'm gonna send you that one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. So the fragrance I'm talking about is Tamarindo by Nemo Paris. And it's what it looks like. And the Twisted Lily Boutique, they carry niche fragrances and they have a pretty large selection of fragrances. So I'm gonna leave their website down in my description box for you guys to browse and check out. This is not sponsored, they did send me this, um, but they're not paying me to discuss this fragrance. I do really enjoy this fragrance. Now, the reason why I was interested in trying this fragrance is because of Gabby again, Gabby Loves Perfumes. She discussed it on her channel and before then, I never even looked into the house of Memo Paris. I don't know why it never really intrigued me but she discussed how much she loved this fragrance and she compared it to Sophia by Sophia Bagara and you guys know I really enjoy that fragrance so I was like well if it's comparable to that fragrance then I'm sure there's a good chance that I'll like it and I do think they vibe I don't think Sophia is a dupe but I do think they have a similar vibe as well as like Coco Mademoiselle so if you like fragrances like that then I think you would probably enjoy this fragrance as well because they do have a similar vibe, but I say this is more of a, like a tropical take on those types of fragrances. So I actually have the postcard that came with the fragrance here in front of me because I wanted to read to you guys the description of what inspired the perfumer to create this fragrance. Now, when I first saw the name, I'm like Tamarindo, I automatically think the, the Mexican candy. <laughs> that I really enjoy. I like that like salty, sweet taste that it has. But the inspiration for this fragrance was actually the place in Costa Rica. So on the postcard, here is the postcard. It came on top of the box, really pretty. It says Tamarindo, pineapple flower. I say pineapple floral is definitely the perfect description of this fragrance. It says syncopated dance of drums, oil of jasmine, soft grays of Guanacaste leaves, I don't know if I said that right or not, as green as emeralds. Pineapple catches the light with each facet. It blossoms like a flower beneath the cardamom sun, caressed by the frothy spray of bergamot. 
Vanilla takes on a soft red glow. Dawn swept away by the benzoin wind. Though the breaking waves turn my heart patchouli, I return to Tamarindo where the jungle is a show of art. Between the giant spiders and the happy lizards, inspiration takes on a heady scent. Definitely heady. <laughs> so it says, oh, it has the notes on here too. So it says the notes are bergamot oil, cardamom, pineapple, jasmine absolute, benzoin patchouli, and vanilla absolute. I believe there are more notes on Fragrantica. And to my nose, the most prominent note in this fragrance is that pineapple note. And that's actually the note that had me the most intrigued to try this fragrance. So I was talking to my girls, I'm like, we were discussing how there's not a lot of fragrances that have like a prominent pineapple note. I'd say this is definitely one and it's a good one in that. And the patchouli note is prominent as well. <laughs> so like I said, that was something that I was worried about, but I don't mind patchouli in this fragrance. I actually kind of like it with the, the pineapple note and then also the tuberose note that I'm pretty sure is listed on Fragrantica. To me, the most prominent notes are the pineapple, the patchouli and the tuberose note. And I'd say in that order is how I get those notes. So it's a sweet tropical floral fragrance to my nose, um, but it smells sophisticated, classy, luxe. It doesn't smell juvenile at all. Like I said, not that that's a bad thing, but it smells more of like your, your grown up tropical floral fragrance. The pineapple note here is tart and juicy and sweet. And it's just, it's so delicious. And the patchouli note here is different from any patchouli note I've ever smelled. <laughs> it probably sounds crazy, but I've never smelled patchouli like how I smell it in this fragrance. It smells lush. It's like a, a rich, luxe patchouli note, if that makes sense. <laughs> and accompanied with the, the tuberose note, I'd say the tuberose note here is more of that like buttery, creamy tuberose, but it smells a bit indolic as well. Not in a bad way, but it smells kind of erotic, <laughs> if that makes sense. I really enjoy this fragrance. But I will say that the projection for me isn't the greatest. It has great longevity. It lasts eight hours on my skin at least. But after about the two hour mark, it doesn't project as much. I'd say up until that two hour mark, it projects moderately. After that is more of like you get the occasional whiff as time goes on, but it becomes more close to the skin. I'd say more of a skin scent. So I do wish that it projected for longer, but um, I think that's what probably makes it perfect for the summertime. And the fact that it's a tropical fragrance, it's not overly sweet to my nose, but it definitely has a sweetness to it. And I feel like the tuberose and the patchouli note help to balance that sweetness. It does have a coconut note in it, but I don't really smell it. But I, I have a layering combination. This is not a layering video, but I just like to, to tell you these things when I think of them. I think this layers really well with Bath and Body Works. I think it's coconut pineapple fragrance, the lotion and the mist. I find when I layer those together, it kind of makes it to where I can actually smell the, the coconut note and it amps up that pineapple note even more. It makes it even more like delicious smelling. And it kind of helps to help it project for even longer. So it goes past that two hour mark when I layer all those together. And I just smell literally like <laughs> luxurious tropical goodness. The Bath and Body Works uh, pineapple coconut fragrance just smells like straight up pina colada. It's delicious smelling. So you can imagine how that would smell amazing with this fragrance as well. So like I said, if you like fragrances like Sophia and Coco Mad, I think you might enjoy this fragrance. At least try to give it a sample if you were interested in it. Um, but like I said, this is more of like a tropical take on those types of fragrances. So Twisted Lily did give me a, a coupon code to share with you guys. It's just my name, 10. So it's Takara 10. I'll put it on the screen and down in the description box. I do receive a small commission if you use my coupon code to make a purchase, but I'm sharing that with you guys because I want you guys to be able to save. You can use it site-wide, so on everything that they have, and it's on your entire order. So you order multiple fragrances, 
it'll take the discount off of the order total. So I, like I said, I'll leave that down in the description box. I browse their website and what I like is that most of their fragrances, you're able to order a sample. So you don't have to just straight up blind buy it. And like I said, they have a wide selection of fragrances. And we all know that um, a lot of niche fragrances aren't available on the discount sites. So um, they're not a discounter by any means. Their, their prices are retail prices. A couple of examples of fragrances that I saw on their site that I haven't seen on any discounters are Initia. They have Initia on their site and my code does work for those. And also Zerjoff. I know I've seen Zerjoff on some discount sites, but they have Italica specifically. I just saw it today. Um, and I know that's a popular one that I think, I thought it was sold out, but they do have that fragrance and they also have some other Zerjoff fragrances. So definitely give their site a look if you guys are interested in niche fragrances. I literally went through their entire site and like I said, they have a, a wide selection of fragrances. So I wanna thank them for sending me this fragrance over. I'm really appreciative and I'm happy to have it even though it was the one that I was the most nervous about. So again, that is Tamarindo by Memo Pears. So next I have another niche fragrance that you guys have not seen on my channel as of yet. You can already see it now. But this is Meliora by Parfums de Marley. Look at that gorgeous bottle. As you can see, it already has a good little dent. I've had this for a few months now, um, but I was saving it for my summer video to show you guys. I sampled this last year, I believe. And I knew when I sampled it that I wanted to pick it up for uh, spring, summer. This fragrance is compared to Amethyst by Lalique and they do vibe, I will say that. They're actually very similar, but the main difference I noticed is that Amethyst is more green and it doesn't really have much sweetness to it, to my nose. Meliora still is a bit green, but it's sweeter and it has a vanilla note that adds this like sweet creaminess to the fragrance that I really love. I don't get that vanilla note in Amethyst, even though I think it has one listed. I don't smell it at all. And that vanilla note was really what made me want this fragrance. So it's still a tart, juicy berry fragrance. The berries in Amethyst, I said they were more, they smelled like more unripe. The berries here smell like they're just ripe. And the most prominent berry note I get in this is like a raspberry and amethyst I get more of a blackberry. And then it has a bit of greenness and then it has that sweet creamy vanilla note. This is such a beautiful scent. This one gets a lot of hate, <laughs> I noticed, because people think it's boring or like not niche quality. I love it. I think it's, it's pretty unique because of that greenness along with the uh, sweetness of the fragrance. And for me, it has pretty good longevity as well. I know that's another thing people complain about. It has decent projection. I'd say moderate leaning. It's not a heavy projector. It's more of like an intimate scent. Um, people will probably smell it if they're in your bubble or like even if they're walking behind you. But it's not one that's gonna overwhelm anybody, which is good for summer, especially when it's a sweet fragrance. Now I wouldn't say it's like super sweet, but um, it's like the perfect amount of sweetness for the heat to me. I love it. If that sounds good to you, I recommend giving it a try. And again, that is Meliora by Parfums de Marley. And I talked about Amethyst in my video last year, so that's why it's not in this lineup. I do still really like Amethyst. I thought about decluttering it, <laughs> but when I got uh, Meliora, I'm like, I think they're different enough to keep them both. So next, I have a fragrance that you guys have saw on my channel and know I love. This is Elang in Gold by M. Mikalef. Oof, looks gorgeous. <laughs> so yeah, as I've said previously, this is like your tropical floral fragrance again. This is sweet. It has a creamy coconut and vanilla fragrance. And it also has Elang as the name implies. And to me, Elang in most fragrances tends to smell kind of like banana and specifically like banana candy. So it kind of smells like that in this, but like I said previously in a luxurious way, this smells like, like I've said it, I keep saying it, it smells like money. So good. And like I said, I feel like this one sweetens like more as time progresses. Cause when I first got it, I didn't feel like it was sweet enough. I felt like it was too floral. Um, but 
I've noticed that as time goes on, it gets sweeter. It's not one that has like a huge projection, which is why I think it's good for summer because it doesn't become overwhelming with the sweetness. It's not overly sweet though by any means, but it's a really nice tropical floral fragrance. So again, that is Elang and Gold by M. Mikleff. So here's another one that is no stranger to my channel. This is Victor and Roth Magic Lavender Illusion. And I believe I discussed this in my fall fragrance video. And I feel like it's great for the summer heat because it's not like a super sweet fragrance. This is a black currant pine and lavender fragrance. Those are the most prominent notes to my nose. In the opening, it opens up with the, I think it has a finger lime note and it gives it like this citrusy smell. And then the pine note is really prominent in the opening along with that lavender note. So the opening is very aromatic, green, citrusy with a bit of sweetness. In the opening, it smells very unisex. I'd say almost masculine leaning. I think it is a unisex fragrance technically, but I feel like the dry down is more feminine leaning. I think it would smell nice on Amanda as well. Yeah, after the opening, the most prominent note on my skin is the black currant note. And it's like this juicy, but sweet, still a bit tart black currant note is so, I love it. The black currant is my favorite part. And like I said previously, the lavender note is kind of like, like the name implies an illusion because you get it like with like uh, whiffs throughout the day. It's not something that you're smelling continuously throughout the day. You just get an occasional whiff and you're like, oh, there's the lavender. <laughs> but the black currant you get um, after the opening throughout the entirety of the fragrance and the pine still sticks around, but the pine to me becomes more so in the background of the fragrance. Now this is one that you probably want to sample first because a lot of people don't like it. <laughs> I've heard people say that it smells like pine salt and uh, lavender scented pine salt if that, but on me, I think it's beautiful. And it's a nice, fresh, but still a bit sweet fragrance and I enjoy it for the heat. And also in the heat, I feel like the black currant note is even more prominent. So um, if you've tried it in the colder weather, maybe give it a try in the heat to see if, it's, if it works better for you in the heat if you didn't enjoy it when it was colder outside. But again, that is Victor and Roth Magic Lavender Illusion. So next I have Mancera Coco Vanille. And y'all know I had holidays and I told y'all I didn't know if I was gonna keep that one. I did end up decluttering it because I just, I don't know, it was too sharp. Kept, it was burning my nose. I couldn't, I couldn't get past that. And I said, I'm gonna try Mancera one more time. <laughs> one more time. And it didn't work out then and I just was gonna give up on them. So I tried this fragrance because it was compared to Holidays on Fragrantica. But this one to me is, it is very similar to Holidays to my nose, but think Holidays without that seawater notes. So I believe that the seawater note is what was uh, making it a bit sharp to my nose. Probably accompanied with that Mancera DNA. <laughs> It was kind of burning my nose whenever I would wear it. So I was like, let me try this one and see how I feel about it. This does not have that seawater note. So it's just straight up sweet coconut and vanilla. And not say this is more vanilla than coconut. It's like, it literally smells like maybe you have a vanilla and coconut flavored ice cream to my nose. It's so sweet. Or even like a vanilla cupcake with like coconut flavored frosting, something like that. <laughs> It's a sweet fragrance now, don't get me wrong. So for me, I would wear this one more so in summer nights as opposed to the daytime because it might be too sweet for like the summer heat. But like, you know, at nighttime, it cools down a bit. It's still hot here in Florida. At nighttime, it might be like in the 80s as opposed to like 90s, 100 or something degrees in the daytime. So I like this one. Now I will say it does still have that Mancera DNA, but it's not to the point where it's like nose burning and sharp to me to where I can't enjoy this fragrance while I'm wearing it. So if you had that issue with holidays as well, but you do like the fragrance of it as a whole, then I'd recommend giving this one a try to see what you think. But yeah, again, that is Coco Vanille by Mancera. So those are all the fragrances I had to show you guys in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now, before I end this video, I do want to shout my girl out because she just launched her 
new jewelry line and I think, what's today? Today is the 12th. So she launched it yesterday. I actually already placed my order and she has some really beautiful pieces. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I actually am wearing one of her pieces today. She sent me these beautiful um, like croissant detailed hoop earrings. Let me actually take it off and show you guys. So here's what that looks like. Really pretty. And her pieces are quality. She did not ask me to talk about this in a video. I'm doing so because I want to support my girl. It's my choice. And like I said, they're quality. I've been testing these out. Um, and she sent them to me because my skin is sensitive. So I've been wearing these a lot. <laughs> Pretty much just about every day and even keeping them in in the shower and everything to one, see if it was gonna irritate me and two, see if I was gonna have any like quality issues so I could give her feedback. No quality issues. They haven't rusted. They haven't irritated my ears and they're super cute. I love them. I like that they're nice and dainty but still like big enough to where you can see them when I'm wearing them, like through my hair, cause my hair, you know, my hair is big and in the way. <laughs> but yeah, I really like them and I will have her website linked down in my description box. Did I say who it was? It's Maria or it's MJ on YouTube, y'all. Y'all probably knew that, but if you're watching me, then you probably watch her already. And I wanted to mention and just in case any of you guys wanted to support her as well, um, I'm very proud of her and I am excited for my new pieces to be coming <laughs> and I'm thankful that she sent me these to test out because I have been loving them. So yeah, I will leave her website down in my description box so you guys can go check out her pieces and maybe buy some for yourself. But yeah, that is the end of this video. Like I said, I will have Twisted Lily's website linked down in my description box as well and my coupon code if you guys are interested in any fragrances from their site and want to save a bit of money. And I'm going to go ahead and stop rambling and end this video now. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel before you leave. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.